Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ascension Diaries YouTube channel. My name is Alexis and my obsession is space weather and the Schumann Resonance. And I make these videos to report both of those things and sprinkle in a few extras. So without further ado, let's get into what has been going on the last few days because I know you've been feeling it and that's probably why you clicked on this video. And I've I'm also there with you. I've been feeling it. So let's look at what we've been feeling. And maybe there's some scientific reason why we feel crazy or great to the last couple of days. We're going to, we're going to look into it together. So the first graph I have here, this is the overall Schumann resonance chart. It shows the amplitude and the frequencies of the Schumann resonance and the time in which it happened. This is from this site, this website is Russian and it uploads to a Russian website. Everything's in Russian. I've heard that there's over 200 sites that are feeding into this data, but I don't have full on concrete evidence of that. So I can't say that's for sure, but whatever happens on this chart, I have other locations that I'm going to bring up later. Usually when the energy comes in, it comes in around the same time on all the charts, but comes in a different strength. So we look at the Russian chart because it, it communicates the best. It uploads the fastest and it is, it has become the most popular, I think for those reasons. Um, some people believe that it's not accurate enough for people on the other hemisphere and the other sides of the world to compare their experiences to a Russian data, but I'm here to show you, and I'm sure many other people, if you're new here, hello, welcome, but so many other people who have been following me for so long, there has been some correlation over and over and over. So that's why I still research it and I encourage other people to be discerning with what I say and what I report, of course. So let's just, with that all being said, let's look at what actually has shown up on this chart. So the last two days, okay, so today is the 21st, January 21st. It is 8 p.m. Mountain Time for me. And this activity you can see here is the most recent Schumann activity, which happened around 6 p.m. And a little bizarre. I wish you could see it a little better, but maybe I can make it. Oh yeah, that's nice. So you can see here that there's a lot of a lot of horizontal lines in this chart, which are also white in color. So very bizarre that this kind of behavior happens out of nowhere. You can even see right next to it, there's even a fainter vertical line. When you get the vertical lines, it means that this is Hertz in Russian, but it goes from zero to 40 hertz oh no you can't see because my logo is right there boop i love obs you can move stuff around so easy even when you're recording but anyways zero to 40 hertz so activity like you can see here has been pushed past the bottom of the chart it can be said that that has reached that the amplitude or the power or the stimulation has reached beyond 40 hertz in the ionosphere which is into the gamma brainwave state. So this information here came through. It disturbed past 40 hertz, but not too much. As you can see, it's basically dark blue. It's not as potent, not as white as we would say white out. But you can track over here to around, I would say like one, two, three, four in the morning, mountain time. And this is, that's universal time minus seven for those of you listening who are not in North America. During that time, which is the middle of the night, which they say is a great time for you to have your brain waves reach other states where you can dream, where you can heal. And so this energy is coming. It is stimulating the ionosphere from zero to 40 hertz and beyond at these particular hours of the night for people in North America anyways. And ironically, it seems to happen around the 17th hour more so. so I usually see around the 15, 16, 17 hour a lot of the time, which again, they say the Schumann resonance is impacted by the earth turning and the sun hitting the atmosphere. So it makes sense that when it gets very much very dark in the deepest part of the night, that there might be an energy pulse that kind of happens. Makes sense to me. That might be why this is going on. That's a part of the theory anyways. But again, it does impact us. 
And the same behavior, like we see just happened at 6 p.m. today, also happened around the exact same time yesterday. And then in the exact same time that morning, so on the 20th, that we also reached a 0 to 40 hertz amplitude blast during the same hours of the night. And then again, repeating on the 19th. So this is the 20th into the 19th, around 6, 5, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, we had another impulsive activity and so on. So there is a decent pattern going on in the Schumann resonance during the times that it is stimulated. And I just wanted to lay that out for you in case you hadn't seen it before, in case you missed me talking about it once or twice in the past. And also here, if you look at the hertz specifically on the side, like here it says 16, you can see maybe 17, 17 hertz being stimulated in the background constantly during this behavior. Not very brightly, not very loudly, but it is there. And as you can see, there's other horizontal lines showing up consistently too. So let's trace this one back. And that chases back to maybe around 10 hertz. And again, 8 hertz. Boom, 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 boom. It goes across horizontally. This frequency is stimulated pretty much all day, every day, at least throughout the last three days. And you can see subsequently the other lower frequencies, they're having a similar experience horizontally. But then again, like I s you see here, very strong vertical across the whole spectrum, across the whole range of the ionosphere's ability to vibrate between 0 and 40 hertz. I think it's supposed to be able to go between 0 and 60 usually. So um, it could go, I wish this chart had a 60, like it would extend past to down to 60. So we'd probably catch more of this phenomenon and get a little bit more accurate data. I don't know why they haven't changed it, but I've asked this question many times, as many of you probably know, but let's, let's move on. So I wanted to show you all of that, that has been happening around 5 p.m., which is around the time that everyone's kind of coming home and coalescing in North America again, and then around in the middle of the night where everyone is in, they're supposedly supposed to be in their deepest part of slumber. It is the quietest time in North America really for this kind of level of disturbance to happen when everyone's sleeping is very interesting. Even if you just thought about us all as lab rats instead of people, you know, this is the type of stuff that you would pay attention to. What is being inserted into the environment during the deepest sleep cycles of people in North America? This is the kind of questions that I have in my head. I've read enough psychology papers. <laughs> to that's kind of how I've been wired. So I wanted to share that and my perspective with you. So let's look again from zero to four hertz. You have the ability during these frequency blasts, in my opinion, or it's possible anyways, that you could, your brainwaves can change from either 0 to 40 or 60. And so you have all of a sudden potentially been opened up to almost this like portal or this potential where it's easier for your brainwaves to entrain to higher frequencies. So you can go from 0, which I wouldn't recommend, 0 pretty much means you're dead, but... <laughs> go from zero to four hertz and that's your deepest sleep uh and then we can go all the way up through alpha and beta brain waves into gamma waves which is from 40 to 100 hertz and it's the gamma area is great for learning memory it's for processing um emotions and yeah, it's kind of a more mysterious area of brain waves, which I think is interesting. So we're being stimulated and we have the potential to reach these brain waves more easily during these higher blasts because our brain waves will entrain to the Earth's ionosphere. Funny enough. So let's look at what the amplitude was behind these blasts that happened at these times. The amplitude is basically the power or the push behind the sound. So how loud is the sound really? And at least this is what I've gathered. This is my opinion. Of course, I have to keep saying this over and over and over because I don't have the big stamp of Schumann resonance scientist, but I'm working on it <laughs> in my own way with you. But during that, the blast we just had around 5, 6 p.m. mountain time, the amplitude was actually very, very quiet. I'm just going to open it up a little bit so you can see it. As you can see here, 
reached about a 12 amplitude. So the first line here is 7.83 hertz, which hangs out around here. So this constant kind of background buzz right here, that's sort of the Earth's frequency buzz. You can see that it's pretty consistent. It's usually always horizontally stretching. It's it to me and the amplitudes on this chart usually are always the highest for the 7.83 hertz, which makes sense because that's supposed to be the primary frequency of Earth's ionosphere, of Earth's Schumann resonances. And then they step down like a harmonic in a way. So the next one is 14, which you would see probably right in between these two. And 14, it does buzz. You can see it kind of getting green there, green there. Gets quiet, 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 buzz right here, and so on. You can see that there's kind of this background information, which is a little bit more natural. And then, boom, like out of nowhere, there's just a really intense pulse of amplitude. And that's what I'm really watching because to me, it looks unnatural. It looks like there is some type of energy that has just arrived and it leaves just as promptly. It's almost as if we're being sh like fake, like some, you know, some people believe that spaceships or higher dimensional beings and like beings of the light are blasting the planet with high frequency energy. And it's supposed to be helping the earth and us evolve in a way and kind of lift us into a higher frequency of functioning which is great because when these blasts do happen and I'm awake and it's 17 or 24 hours long like I have on my sweatshirt I have a great day usually me I'm in high spirits I'm getting stuff done I'm going out in the world I'm doing errands so that's my experience during these high frequency moments so let's look at what amplitude hit during you know one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning in North America, while we were sleeping, it hit an amplitude of a 56, and it actually hit the exact same amplitude the previous night, almost the exact same. The waveforms look a little different. You see there's a small pop and then a big pop, and over here, it's a little bigger and a smaller one afterwards, but really, the behavior of the last two days look very, very similar, which is also something I watch. Why? I don't even know. It's just fascinating to me. And I'm glad that you're here listening because I think it might be fascinating to you too. <laughs> I know a lot of you are watching because you've also experienced unexplainable reactions to these Schumann resonance blasts. And that's why I do the work that I do because I want to be able to support other people who are highly sensitive, not even highly sensitive, mostly just everyday people now are feeling this. And I want to support it so people aren't medicating or freaking out or feeling like or just being purely confused the fact that there is a phenomenon out there that you can check and people are like wow that is might be why i'm feeling weird because it's happening right now and you can check it on your phone it's fantastic the future has been very friendly to us <laughs> so we had the same amplitude during those last two times similar during those hours where during 5 6 p.m in North America and it's very interesting that this behavior has been pretty much the exact same two days in a row so we're gonna keep an eye on that I'm actually gonna show you now this is the frequency chart so 7.83 like I mentioned before is the white line and you can see here it hangs out right here 7.84 7.65 it's hanging out averaging in between 7.83 ish that's where it kind of dances and all the other frequencies, they don't really dance too far out of where they, they hang out. It usually is around 7.83 that this line is hanging out at. And at the most potent hour, you know, when the last blasts were coming in, pretty normal, pretty normal behavior in the frequencies. Those frequencies were very much where they were supposed to be. The most recent blast that happened this evening, excuse me, at had a bit of a dip and had a lower frequency. So 7.27 was what was ringing out during that small amplitude pulse that kind of happened, which was also kind of bizarre looking with these weird vertical lines, not vertical, horizontal white lines amongst this. It's very weird to see in my opinion, but we're working on figuring out what it is. And so next chart, 
next chart I'm going to show you is, <laughs> sorry, something just fell off camera. <laughs> Don't be alarmed. Everybody's okay. What the next thing I want to show you is called the Q chart. There are the Q graph or the Q um, rate. And so the Q quality is how pure the frequency was when during at what time. So the frequency of 7.27, like we saw on the other chart here, here, look at this, hit a quality or purity of 19. And you can see here that the numbers, they don't range as big as the amplitude can, but sometimes they can. Like for example, when we had the evening pulse yesterday on the 20th, the quality and the purity of the 14 hertz, which I will show you over here at that hour, which was just hanging out at 13.16, was a quality of 46, which means it was so pure, like super purely for like compared to normal it was just purely 46 <laughs> um i'm sorry purely 13.16 i think that's what it's saying or maybe it's closer to like 12 point something but you get my point i hope you're following along with what i how i read these charts and please if i'm doing this wrong and you're like way better at this than i am i would love your respectful honest kind comments below to help me learn more and share more because I truly am here. I'm trying to help. So like I said before, that 7.27 hit a quality of 19. Very interesting that the quality was super poised during this time. It seems like across the board, the quality was very intense, which makes sense because again, it looked kind of weird and I, the quality I've been watching doesn't usually behave like that. So very interesting. And speaking of Q, <laughs> just I thought this would be the best way to segue into this for those of you watching, because this is a big part of what we discuss in my home and my friend circles and my community right now. And I'm just gently including you if you want <laughs> is the QAnon phenomena, which is basically, in my opinion, they are <laughs> fantastic sources of information of what could be happening with the political realm of the planet and I guess political maybe is even too it's military it's basically the what's what the underground stuff is actually going on the reasons and the clues behind why things are happening publicly are being reported on and done anyways so when the QAnon began posting again, which was on the 19th, they were, they said the great awakening, which is the biggest, one of the biggest things. The great awakening is what I study really at the Schumann resonance, I believe is related to the great awakening. It's bringing people's brainwaves to higher frequencies when this stuff is going on. And I believe that's allowing us to actually reach greater and greater capacities of brain power and conscious, you know, manipulation in a way when you know that everything is consciousness and you have a higher vibration you're able to actually manifest and create in this reality that really is just consciousness experiencing itself so the next thing that was said was that it quoted a from june january 21st 2018 the post that they posted on that day is says the shot heard around the world the great awakening a week to remember and as many of you may know in the united states they're currently trying to impeach trying i shouldn't say it like that i should say that the senate and the all political realm is currently in a back and forth about proving either that the president should stay or shouldn't stay in power and i believe that this is going to be very encouraging to the people who are watching this drama to say that, oh, wow, I think that this week, starting January 21st, which is today, is possible that this next coming week is going to be very exciting for the patriots and the people who have been watching Q, who have been watching the Trump administration, who have been watching those who have been trying to attack and change and manipulate all of this system 
way before the Trump administration was going on is all seemingly, that's what we are wanting and what we're expecting is that this is going to be coming to the light of the public, the crimes against humanity. And I want everyone's crimes against humanity to be revealed and I want justice for all, of course. So I'm not picking sides. I'm just encouraged to see that this is possibly what's going to be happening this week. So let's look at the Schumann resonance data from other areas of the world instead of just Russia, because I'm not going to specialize on just Russia. This particular site, heartmath.org, measures from six sites around the world, California, Saudi Arabia, Lithuania, Alberta, Canada, uh, Northern New Zealand, Northland, New Zealand, and South Africa. So these are areas all over the world. South Africa and New Zealand are pretty close, but really not that that close. And the purple line is South Africa. The purple line, South Africa seems to be at a place which makes sense because the um, radiation around the earth is actually less um, protected over South Africa. So they actually get more radiation than normal. So they get higher readings of amplitude and power often with the Schumann resonance. And I'm forgetting the name of the anomaly, what they call it. I'm sorry. I totally just forgot what it's called. But there is an anomaly over South South Africa and, yeah, that area of the Pacific that's a little more radiated the, than the rest of the planet. So they do have higher readings, and I believe that's probably why. But again, you can see here, 21st, the power of... A hard time reading two of the sites are offline they're showing zero points the readings from south africa say 205 as you can see here the power which says it's measuring from zero to 36 hertz which doesn't make sense why they're getting <laughs> readings of 200 and so on but i'm pretty sure they mean power is also amplitude but i think they're measuring another type of amplitude than the Russian site, neither of them actually share what units they're measuring in the amplitude section or the power section. So it's a really interesting thing that they have both left out of their data that they're sharing publicly. I just wanted you to be aware of that. And so these sites, they, it's hard to compare what's going on with these sites with the Russian site because I'm not exactly sure what units they're both using. So I use all this data with caution and it's mostly just eyeballing weird anomalies and patterns that aren't working or that are working in favor of you know this in in a good dance so here's another example you may recognize the style of chart as this is being used as well oops again south africa you can see here on the bottom you can see that uh, alberta canada and saudi arabia are offline looks like actually Almost everybody's offline as of the 20th, except for New Zealand and South Africa. So I wanted to show you here again that when, let's look at this for an example. South Africa on the 18th had a lot of amplitude going on. And you can see across the other countries that during those same times, there was also warmth, I would say, on the charts. But a different level of warmth, a different level of stimulation. They weren't as strong, you know. Even real close by in New Zealand, there was almost zero, like weirdly how there's almost zero activity going on. But while South Africa is just blowing up. But I do tend to see that it gets warm in the same times all around the world, which also shows me that it's possible that the ionosphere and what's going on maybe in Russia or all these other places, it's just happening at different strengths around the world, but around the same time and it's happening and it's being felt at these places all around the world too so that's why i keep doing this because i'm like i'm pretty sure that there's still you know what is hitting our gi our giant ionosphere the highest part of our atmosphere is kind of radiating across the whole planet and also vibrating the ionosphere which also vibrates with our brain waves so i've had enough people be like yeah this this time of the day, I felt really weird for me to continue this study, just saying. So let's look at what they say is a major influence of the Schumann resonance, which is lightning in a way. So where they're having major lightning, 
they were also supposed to be having major Schumann resonance activity. Africa is getting, sorry, not Africa, Australia. (laughs) My bad, I'm sorry. Australia is getting the most lightning storms right now. I don't have a site for Australia, unfortunately. I do for New Zealand. New Zealand's pretty darn quiet. So we're getting all of this stuff. New Zealand's down here. For those of you who don't know, they're not getting any lightning right now, but really close they are. There is quite a bit of storming happening in Australia. But again, it's I've been having the hardest time connecting lightning content to Schumann resonance content, which you think it wouldn't be that hard because they say they are related. But I'm still trying because I really want to be consistent when trying to do the best scientific research that I can. But there you go. So next I want to show you the magnetosphere behavior, what's going on. So there, this is the energy, the red band here, energy that's kind of hitting the earth as we're flying, well, being dragged after the sun as the sun's flying through space and being dragged by its own larger stars and so on. And while we're being dragged, we're being, you're plowing through energy that's just in space from all our star and many others. And weird stuff kind of happens in our own magnetosphere. It's, it's kind of dragging behind the earth and trying to keep itself, keep itself stable. And we're seeing a lot of weird light blue um, behind the planet where it seems like the energy is balling up and behaving very strangely. The last two days it's been doing this and I have no explanation for it, but I'm just watching because usually, usually this area isn't infiltrated by less hot or sorry um i should say more hot than the outside layer is what the best i can describe it and this random ball of really cold amongst the really warm it just to me it makes very little sense so i'm just watching you see there's some more impact here and behind the planet there's a little bit of openness there's a little bit of an open space Again, here, you can see that there is a bit more impact going on. A little bit more pressure on the planet, like so. Pressure's building up behind, apparently. The sun, so that's the Earth. Now let's move into what the sun is doing, because the sun is doing stuff too. There is tiny little corona holes that are happening here. They're not even big enough, I guess, to get their own number, which they're usually getting a little number. And so the corona holes not so exciting right now. What is exciting is one thing that will not load on my f- computer, don't know why, is the video that's right here. So now I'm just going to show you screenshots off my phone because that's how I thought about what I can do. So on the 19th, we had, this is from my Instagram, really what I posted. There was this massive ball of energy that came off the sun, literally from like here to here. I know this is crude, but follow with me. That's basically the height and the size of the sun. I've watched this energy get shot out from the sun. It's away from us, the direction, but for that much energy to leave the sun, there's no way in my opinion that it's not going to somehow impact us as we're being dragged behind it and it's flying through space and the heliopause. So we'll see. That was on the 19th, 20, 21, 22. So around the 22nd or today, that energy should show up on our charts because it usually takes three days, two to three days for it to show up. (sighs) They have, this is spaceweathernews.com. This chart, the x-ray flux chart has completely changed. I've never seen this particular version of the chart before. So this is new to me and I'm going to have to just keep watching it because I was used to watching the other chart. X-ray flux seems to be happening though. There is jaggediness going on, which is really usually the best indicator with these charts. It's just like when you see jaggediness, it means energy is coming. <laughs> For those of you who aren't as you know adept in reading graphs and charts and so on, jaggedy usually means you know jaggedy. Something's happening. The solar wind did a rise and it fell and then it rose up, got jaggedy. Everything on here got jaggedy. So there is energy coming in from the sun right now as of today, in my opinion, according to this data. You can see here on the K index, which is, again, the magnetosphere. When it gets super, when there's stuff hitting it, it starts to vibrate more and it starts to rise in KP. So it did a bit of a rise, never got to mid-level storm, but 
it did it did something which i'm good this is the heliopause when i'm talking about so that energy that shot out you can see kind of on this chart right here maybe but you can see the energy kind of floating over us as it rotates out from the sun and that's what we watch as well to see when this energy is going to be hitting us in a way and the electrons are getting jaggedy as well and we watch the electrons because when the electrons are going a little weird the electrons are very much involved with ionosphere the ionosphere is charged particles it is plasma in a way so when electrons and protons and so on are are hitting it and recharging and discharging usually this chart is showing up with weird jaggedy behavior and the Schumann resonance is usually going off at the same time. If, just for your information, we've been having worldwide, so this energy has been hitting us pretty much on a schedule, <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, with the Schumann resonance at least, and the volcanic activity has gone from basically all of these dots were red at one point, almost all of them, it seems like the volcanoes are cooling off and the volcanic activity isn't getting more intense. It seems to be finally like kind of chilling out, but still the one in Antarctica seems to be still erupting. And that's a weird one, Erebus, the volcano. And then we have volcanoes, so on. Yeah, we have a few eruptions going on all over the world but nothing too crazy. It's not getting worse. I'm also bringing up the seismographs that are all over the world. Here's the website. Excuse me. And we have a little bit of earthquake activity. Again, there's a little bit of a shake going on in the, in the Caribbean. Similar times you can see here, China, a little bit of weirdness going on in China with their earthquakes. I'm waiting, I'm scrolling for a specific one, but you can see that pretty quiet, pretty quiet, worldwide, pretty quiet. Then Corvallis, Oregon had a really crazy looking earthquake thing go on over here. Very strange. That's in the USA. Many of you, some of my friends live near Corvallis. I'm curious if you felt this. I don't know what the heck this was. This is very severe in my opinion compared to what everyone else is going through. Corvallis looks like it just like got swallowed up by the whole planet. I don't know. So yeah, we're just, I'm just flying through here. Some of these charts that I fly by that are weird. This is weird. Like this is very strange, but not that powerful. And I've seen that stuff before. It kind of gets jaggedy during some of these parts of the world. Seems like they're always kind of shaken, which is fine. As long as you don't live there, you know, don't live where it's shaking all the time. I wouldn't recommend. That's, that's kind of like a natural selection thing. You know, if you're constantly going to live right next to the volcano or the fault line, you're going to experience these, these things and, you know, your life is going to be impacted. So what are some earthquakes that did happen that were a little bit off-putting to me was, and my eyes were just drawn to it and I wanted to share with you because it got interesting, was these ones in Oklahoma, which are just kind of in the middle of the state, you know, middle of the, of North America. And generally I don't see earthquakes in this area. So, you know, when I think of earthquakes, I think about underground bases. I think about, you know, especially in the United States, I think about stuff that's going on underground because I, I don't really see information coming in from this area. So I'm like, maybe it's a man-made shake that's been going on. So I thought, why don't I just search up what the underground bases are on Google and see if it'll tell me where these underground bases are. And weirdly enough, I did find a list. It wasn't even that hard. Apparently, this list was created by somebody called Don Croft, who had been, you know, visited by the FBI and probably not great that he's telling everybody where all these bases are, but he did and here we are. And so let's look at Oklahoma. Oklahoma, there's two here. You can see how many there are, like I'm just flying through all the states here, but there's quite a few. New Mexico, there's a ton of New Mexico. So let's go to Oklahoma. Number 88, angel number 88. There is a base called ADA, A-D-A. It is at these particular coordinates, and it says there's underground saucer base, and this base does human cloning, and it's FEMA's most sensitive base. So to hear that it's FEMA's most sensitive base just was like, what? Like, in Oklahoma? And why is there a giant earthquake? Why is there earthquakes happening there right now? Not giant earthquake. Let's be honest. It was a 2.5. But still, 
right next to each other, two in a row, 2.5 and a 3.0 earthquake. And so I looked into the bases and that's what I thought, saw. I saw a double number 88, which was a synchronicity to me being like, okay, interesting. I might be on the right track. And then they talk about human cloning, which we've been following very closely, the phenomena of human cloning. I think that's going to be a huge story of 2020 is like cloning is happening. These people have been cloned, people in politics, like all of these people have been cloned and so on. And these clones are going to be retired in some lovely dramatic way to be of an enlightenment to as many people as possible in my opinion so we'll see we'll see how the cloning thing comes out and also that it's fema's most sensitive base i thought was very very fascinating (laughs) so that is basically all that i have for you guys today i took things a little slower usually i'm like ripping through things really fast so i wanted to slow it down and also i want to thank you for those of you who watched my most recent video which was just uploaded i think yesterday and it was the second episode of the divine sovereign beings podcast that i did with my beloved partner jace and we talk about a lot of fun and some serious stories news stories and one of them might be how you have taste buds on your testicles and anus area that you can actually taste sweet and um umami flavors with so now this is a big trend on tiktok people are literally placing their testicles in (laughs) soy sauce and checking if they have a flavor in their mouth and it does indeed happen there is a salty kind of flavor that seems to arise i haven't tried it myself (laughs) and i want i maybe try like some other sweet sweet thing to instead of soy sauce because soy sauce i guess burns a little bit so be careful when doing this test but you can you're tough i'm sure you can handle it so i encouraged all the people on the podcast to try this test and now i'm encouraging you because that was definitely the most interesting story (laughs) so i'd like to finish just quickly with a card reading for all of you i do email tarot readings for anyone who's interested we're trying to (laughs) earn enough this month to keep the place that we just moved into and so if you'd like to help me earn my stay and so we can continue working and creating in this space you can order a tarot reading or you can donate to my paypal account because you know that would be really helpful i have a feeling there's going to be some divine you know thing that's going to help us stay here but we're really kind of being put to faith on it and it's been a major test for me but i'm gonna win (laughs) i'm not gonna let it bother me we're gonna make it through so i have openings if you'd like to book a session with me or if you'd like to sign up to do one-on-one counseling on my patreon anything helps really and then the space weather videos will keep rolling out the podcasts will still keep rolling out more creative things we're going to be doing shirts again and we're going to be doing possibly plasma uh, tools and things like that. We have so many ideas and we're really excited to be here in Sedona as part of the community. And we just like really want to stay. So <laughs> if you'd like to help me out, those options are in the description box below. And this is for you as a thank you for everything that you do do for this channel and for humanity, really. This is just a gift from me to you. Dear Source, may I please do a reading for the viewer who's watching me right this second what is it that they need to know that will bring them the most clarity about today's energy january 21st what is it that we needed to learn from these blasts that occurred Woo, there we go i had to get specific you know sometimes it make me work it makes me work for it so ooh, all right i have two really great cards first card i see is the hermit card which i definitely felt today i was so tired i was feeling like constantly like i don't know if you guys are feeling that but i was just it's been raining all day and i'm just been so gloomy but i got all dressed up for you and do this video so here we go hermit card hermit means you're just chilling inside you're reflecting you're having some time on your own and relaxing and just kind of working on your own emotional intelligence you're processing that's what the hermit does they, they meditate in a cave by themselves because everyone else and everything else is too stimulating and they need a break so they can catch up and be their very best. And what do you do when you're very, your very best? You are the queen of swords who is very enlightened. She has the sword of clarity 
and she is the defender of her people of her loved ones and she also makes she's she's no bullshit she's she sees right through all the lies she sees sees through the deceit and she is very firm in her leadership and protective of her loved ones so you know see the lies that you're telling yourself see the lies that are being told to you and do not allow them to bring you into fear do not allow them to impact you in a negative way cut right through those lies meditate and cut through those lies and liberate yourself and your loved ones and your loved ones will be grateful for that because when you're liberating yourself just because you're genetically connected to them or you're even living in the same vicinity as them they will actually experience similar feelings on a deep cellular uh, level in a way so fun fact that's kind of how the quantum field works we're all connected and with that i'm going to finish this video thank you again so much for liking subscribing commenting being a part of this community and i will see you all again very soon be good and do good everyone goodbye <laughs>